Sir, you will always remain our hero as the first Indian astronaut to travel to outer space. Uh, what would be your spe uh, special message to young India, especially those uh, probably who would also like to be an astronaut or any profession which they feel it's absolutely impossible to reach? And also uh, part B of this question is, as you rightly said, it's been 30 years since India has sent an astronaut to outer space, you know. So what would your message be to uh, a younger generation or young India as to what, uh, what are the qualities where they could, you know, in, uh, imbibe and how, uh, you know, maybe within the next decade we could see another young astronaut going to outer space? Well, the only reason that another Indian has not gone uh, is not because we are not capable, it's just that our space program hasn't matured to a level which will be able to uh, sustain humans in near Earth orbit. So once that happens, uh, the natural follow-up would be for, uh, for our manned space program to begin. And when that happens, then of course, there'll be very many more who are going to go up. So uh, I, would, I would say that um, really um, what happens, what, what my experience has been that um, things look very daunting when they are viewed from the outside. It, it looks that maybe uh, one will not be able to make the cut, that uh, this is something very new and uh, or, you, know, you tend to get gripped by those feelings of inadequacy. Will I, will I not be able to do it? But I believe that uh, uh, whatever opportunity comes your way, uh, it must be grabbed because the fact is that when you actually jump into the fray and you're actually involved in something which you thought was extremely difficult, you, and you find out that it really is not so. So, you know, so uh, uh, experience it and you don't really know where it might take you to. It, it's, it's lousy to have... Uh, missed out on a lottery just because you didn't buy the ticket, you know. Sure. So, I would say that uh, whatever opportunity that comes your way, you, you must grab it. Uh, you might fail, that's okay, but you must give it a bash. And only because things are never as difficult as they appear. Uh, so, don't let uh, your uh, feelings, uh, you know, of inadequacy inhibit you from making that attempt. So, if not as a professional today, so many people are enrolling to go to Mars, and uh, what would you say about that? Again, I would say that that's inevitable. Um, I only hope that uh, when we do go, uh, we are able to live by a different paradigm, that we don't do to Moon and Mars what we've done to Earth. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I only hope that when we do move out, um, it, it's on a different uh, way of scale, living, yeah. mindset, yes, a change is required, for sure. And then yesterday you were telling me that people who have enrolled for Mars are not going to come back. It's a one-way ticket. I, no, I didn't. No, no, he let, said that to let me, me yesterday. Let me qualify that. I said that the um, group which is having that kind of a uh, search and they are um, recruiting uh, uh, some people and selecting them, if you will, for a one-way ticket to Mars, they are the f guys, uh, you know, I, I believe that they are not doing the right thing, primarily mm. because you, you cannot transplant somebody into an environment nobody has ever been sure. and then tell them that that's where you're going to stay, learn how to survive, and, you know, whenever you do create for yourself the technology from local resources to be able to return, you can return then. Mm. I mean, you know, that's, this that's is... That's absurd. Yeah. It's a, it's a life sentence. Absolutely. Even if that means growing potatoes. So. Um, we love the answer you had given our then Prime Minister, uh, she, um, she, um, Mrs. Indira Gandhi ji, is sare jahan se achha. And there's so much of climatic changes that we are seeing around today. Mm, due to global warming. So, uh, sir, what would be your advice to uh, Indians in per se, uh, that how can we start looking after Mother Nature right from home? 
Well, <clears throat> well let's take um, one aspect, global warming. I mean, uh, I really don't know who to believe. Do we believe Al Gore? Do we believe Dr. Pachauri? And as you know that today, it's getting more and more difficult to be, believe Dr. Pachauri, even if he says, I didn't do it. Uh, <laughs> or, or do we believe this uh, German whistleblower who says that NASA has been fudging uh, thermal data for decades now and that global warming is a figment of their imagination. Oh, okay. so, so we don't really know what's going on, but uh, that said, there is no denying that the way we are living our lives is absolutely unsustainable for our planet. You know, and I, 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 I can recall what Gandhiji said that our planet has enough for everybody's need, but not for everybody's greed. greed. So uh, we do need to kind of uh, move away from this consumerist culture, which we, we all seem to adopt just because we now have the purchasing power. We, we want to do all that has been done earlier in the West, which has brought us to the point that we are. Uh, our non-renewable resources are drying up. We've already crossed peak oil and uh, manufacturing is moving into our part of the world because of lax um, environmental regulation. And we've got to stop this. Uh, otherwise, we are going to just uh, make our, give eviction orders to ourselves because this planet is not going to be able to sustain the kind of lifestyles we have begun to aspire for. So we need, I think, to understand the cause-effect equation of our actions and, and also understand that um, this um, planet just does not have the resources to take care of the kind of our consumptive behavior, the kind we've already seen in the West. So uh, tomorrow we are all going to have uh, the means to buy new appliances and stuff. So these are all uh, energy intensive industries which are opening up. Um, we need to make sure that our pollution levels come down, our uh, groundwater does not get poisoned by effluents. Uh, so, because otherwise, um, what are we going to do? You know, when it becomes unsustainable for us to stay here, then will we just blast off and go and populate other planets? Are we going to then start that same cycle there and ruin some other planet? Should we go and make hell elsewhere when we can make heaven right here on Earth? So Very that's well the question said, we need to ask. Very well said. In fact, uh, one of the leading environmentalists who's helping Chennai, they call him the Belgium Messiah to Chennai during the Chennai floods. Uh, he has made a, he had said that um, Chennai, uh, you know, produces nearly 6,000 tons of garbage. And uh, if we right from home segregate the, uh, the ones which like non-plastic and stuff like that, the biodegradable from the degree right at home, uh, we could probably do a lot to, you know, bring down the 6,000 tons. So. I think that's how we need to just start at, uh, at home. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, we've seen these depressing photographs of, uh, of our cattle dying because of plastic. Albatrosses, uh, you know, Fishes. they come up on, onto yeah. the beach uh, and the carcasses, you know, show so much of plastic. So, yeah, we, we've got to put a stop. This cannot go on. Yeah.